and you get an idea like, oh, it'd be cool to do this. It'd be cool to be to do that. So you know, you're establishing a a baseline of of sounds that once you have those, then you can focus on the performances to make sure that they're they're working. They they they, they all go together. The performance should be working together with the sound. The sound should be going together with the performance. And if you don't, if you don't have the right vibe going in, then it's harder for the musician to to perform right because yeah. they're just kind of guessing at what it might sound like. You want to yeah. The closer you have, the closer you have to like what the production is going to sound like when you do when you track vocals is like so important. Right, right. You want to give and, them a and landscape to- and tone. Ins- tone inspires different tones. Like exactly when you hear one. Just like if you you know pick up a guitar and it sounds one way, it's going to influence how you play that guitar, mm-hmm. you know, or bass or whatever it is. Sure. And there, then there are sometimes where um, where you come at a production from a different perspective that is that is not first and foremost sonic, but it is feel. So in those cases, this tends to be a bit more of a, a discussion with the artist of I want it to feel this way. I want it to feel that way and then it, then it's like a, a a different sort of creative process because you're thinking what is it that we can do that will enhance this mood that will make this mood come across to the listener even like a little bit subconsciously like how how can i magnify that feeling a little bit without them knowing without knowing it you know it's like it'd be like in a movie like the lighting is mm-hmm. such a has such a dramatic effect on how a uh, scene feels you know how what are we right. going to do to create that scene right like a dark you know not so colorful scene is going to give you a gloomier vibe sure sure i was working with an artist a while back and she said that she wanted a song to feel kind of neon and so we listened to the demo of the song or she played it or something and we just kind of had a conversation about what does that mean to you and then how can we create some of these vibes? And in particular, it was it was a song about, it was not autobiographical, but it was about uh, uh, a woman that was like sitting in a bar and there were neon signs and there was, so it was kind of like this dark mood, but with like particular lighting. Like if you were to think of almost like making the music video first, th- this was the scene. It was like a cinematic mm. thing. And so then we had whole conversations about well what is it that we what is it that we do? How are we gonna create that? And so like one of the things I pitched to to the producer said, how about we use uh a Rhodes instead of a bass? If you just play the bottom, it has this sort of like electric feel that is different. It's still playing the bass notes like you would play with an electric bass, but it's it has a different timbre. And so yeah. how can we shift some things that are just a little bit different than what people are, you know, like what would be a, a standard thing and that can set up a, a, a mood, a feel differently and then build from there. So we did stuff like that in that production. And as we built it up, there were there were things like that that we kind of kept coming back to this feel. How can we capture this mood what parts need to get added in what parts need to sound what way and it turned out to be a really a really cool cool track that's a, that's a really cool story thank you for sharing that and that uh that little insight yeah and and one thing i'll i'll add to that too is when you have a vision sometimes you come across things by accident so with that same song we were just going to record some scratch vocals and the mic that I had been using on her vocals, um, someone was in, we have a Studio A and a Studio B at Rack Tracks. And so someone in Studio A was already using that mic. And um, it was like, oh, let's add some vocals to this one real quick. So I just went and grabbed another mic. And it, like, it wasn't working. It, it was not the mic for her voice. But it was like, you know what, it's a, it's a scratch vocal. We're just laying it down so that we have it... Um, as a placeholder and a, and a way to, to help solidify some of the mood before we do the final vocals and as we work on the production. And for whatever reason, it sounded a little bit more filtered on her voice than, than I would normally think of this mic sounding. And I just kind of tucked that one away and I said, this doesn't sound right. 
But I think if we take this idea even further, that um, that this might actually be the right vibe for it. So I ended up mm. I ended up recording when we came to doing the real vocals. I ended up doing going way further and and recorded the vocals on an old um, vintage RCA seventy seven, and it gave like a much more rolled off high and low, and it gave this kind of right. natural filtering that contributed to the the overall feel, but it was because we had already discussed it. We had already yeah. established kind of a little bit of the palette. Um, and even though we hadn't said, let's distort the vocals or let's filter the vocals, or, let's do anything. It was like, wait a minute, this will work. I think we need to go even further. So um, y- you come across things by accident sometimes that then work within the vision if you have that established. Yeah, it's like this more cinematic approach can it's just a more open approach because you're you're not tied to anything specifically. You're just trying you're just trying to get a vibe. Right. And right. like anything that suits that vibe is like fair game, you know? Right. I love it. Uh so so dude, uh I was listening to a bunch of your mixes that you sent me before we started uh tracking the the interview. Uh so to my ears your mixes sound very modern while retaining like authentic vibes. Tell me about your approach to mixing. I think part of it is that my tastes sometimes lie with a certain amount of natural sound. I want something to sound real. Doesn't mean that I don't love things that sound totally unreal, but um, something connects more to me when it sounds real. So I think that informs the way I treat drums, for example, or some different level balances and, and things like that. So I feel like that that may, be, that may speak to your, your, uh, your description there. Um, what was it? You said modern, modern, but what? Mo- modern and uh, but authentic. Uh, like it doesn't sound like overly polished. It, it's it just it also sounds like the the soul of the artist lives in the mix, which can o- often be overmixed in like a modern production. I guess maybe does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, and and that's the goal to me is that you don't want to create something that that like doesn't feel like them. I don't really care about the concept of can we pull this off live or not. To me, that's not an important one. Um, but I do want it to still feel true to the artist. So I think that that is informing a lot of the decisions. Now, it's something that I have pushed myself to adapt sometimes because sometimes a natural sound would not be right for the track. And so what you have to do is you have to find what is going to fit naturally in the mix. So sometimes that means, like with a recent record that I did, it means like a bunch of distortion on the drums. And sometimes that's going to mean a lot of vocal reverb. Sometimes it's going to mean very little. Sometimes, you know, it, it's going to have a whole a whole bunch of different variations. But I think a lot of it is trying to find what feels like it would, what feels like it goes together naturally. And there's going to be dynamic things that you're considering. There's um, frequency balance things that you're considering. Um to to try to capture all that together right yeah do you do you work in the box or or are you working outboard these days um what does mixing look like for you a a little bit of both so i was a pretty early adopter of um of working completely in the box but i describe my my method as kind of a hybrid right now and ultimately i will do what i think is going to be best for the needs of the project so for some for some artists, mixing 100% in the box is going to make the most sense for a whole host of reasons. It could be the the way it's going to need to come together. It might be something where we're, you know, especially recently we've been working remotely, or it could be something where this is going to be done incrementally. Um, there's, Recall. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like, I know I will be coming back to this because, you know, they aren't here in the room with me to say, yep, that's it. So sometimes what I'll I'll say to people is like I'm going to I'm going to work this up and get it to like you know 80 to 90% of the way. I know that there's going to be some automation. I know that there's going to be changes that we'll need to make. But let me send you this and and I'm basically trying to create the effect of hey, I'm mixing, I'm working and and they arrive at the studio after I'm already in progress. They come in and and I say, "Hey, what do you think so far? We're not done yet, but like how is this feeling?" So I yeah. kind of recreate that a little bit and say, okay, it's in your email. Take a listen, and you can see how it feels. And then let's talk about it and 
and yeah. where do we need to go from here? Um, I've been doing that a lot also recently with mixing, like remotely, just kind of like, yeah, this, I think this is the vibe. What do you think? Right. You know, right. kind of, and they could kind of pitch in if they, and also if like, they don't like it, that's no harm done. We'll just start over. But if they, if they do like, it, it's like, okay, great. I'm like 80% of the way there. Right. You know? Or, or you just modify, you know, like I don't want to do a bunch of intense automation if, if this if wasn't, sounds wrong, <laughs> right. If it wasn't the right vibe, because if it's not the right vibe, then we need to, then then all that automation might need to be worked against or, or undone because it's now not going to fit with the new direction of something else. So there's that. Sometimes I will, there are some things that I will work in a mostly analog situation when I think that when it calls for that. Um, but typically I'm somewhere in between and that is going to fall within a, a couple of things. It, it might mean analog summing. So like, you know, mostly in the box control with some, with the analog uh, stage at the back end. Um, it often means bringing in some hardware inserts. So I'm running various tube compressors in, I primarily do it for compression. So I like to have on, you know, vocals, bass, drums, I've got a few key elements that I say, I want this to run through this particular processor and I'm doing that analog. But again, you know, the, the bulk of the control is still happening all in the box, the routing and all that stuff. So it's a hybrid approach and it, it shifts depending on what I think needs to be done, but the format tends to be pretty similar of um, how I'm doing the routing. Yeah, the SSL, the Raxtrax SSL is is not usually being used in like the mixing stage of things for you. Basically. No, no, not typically. No. Do you have any practices to help you stay creative and fresh in the studio? For example, we all get burned out, or we just don't feel motivated, or sure. artistic, or creative. Sure. I think I don't know if I would call it a like a technique or anything but it is some things that i think are important to consider first of all you've got to have your head in the right place especially for mixing if not i find that i make different decisions i want to make sure that i am i am in the right mental space to to get into it and often that'll mean preparing like as i'm going to the studio you know i'll be riding my bike over and i'll be thinking about either some of the songs that I might be mixing or the song that I am mixing. And I'm kind of going through different things that I want it to, to feel like considering um, conversations or notes that I've got about what is my target. Um, or if I'm going to do some revisions, you know, what is it that I need to shift about it and getting some of those things just in, in mind. Sometimes I'll listen to some music while I'm preparing, while I'm getting things together um, setting up my patch bay, getting some of my routing set up and everything. Um, sometimes I'll just listen to the rough mix a, a couple times through while I'm doing that. And, and I find that it, it starts to just get my head into the right place. Um, because if you're not there, then you're going to be struggling against a lot of those things, which works very, uh, hard against your creativity. So, yeah. so that I think is a foundational starting point. Um, some other things that I think that are, are useful for staying creative is a thing that I appreciate about Rack Strikes in particular is that we are a big facility and there's usually something else happening. So there's plenty of times where I'll just go pop into the other studio and just see, Hey, what are you guys up to? Um, or just, you know, stand in the back and listen and you get to hear just another thing that's going on. And there's a ton of times where, where either Rick or Gnome are working on something that's really cool. And so sometimes it becomes like a, you know, a quick conversation. Like, Hey, what are you, what are you doing? Like that, that snare sounds amazing. Or like you might hear a, a reverb or something that, that you just kind of tuck these ideas away. And you often hear people from like the generation ahead of us that lament the, that this is like missing <laughs> from modern production. Like everyone's isolated. Everyone's in their own home studios. Everyone's in their private spot, their private mix uh, rooms or something. And yeah, um, it's true. <laughs> they, they don't have this interaction with other artists. And so I think that's a, a really cool thing for, for creativity in the same way I can say, Hey, do you have a minute? Can you, can you take a listen to this? What, what am I missing? What does this sound right to you? Does this, does this feel right to you? And we'll often do that for each other. We're like, oh, hey, uh, I, I think that's the right direction. Just, you know, try tweaking this a little bit. 
uh, or watch this area. And it's, it's just that like 